66 Legends of the Nine Hour production cars, and this is the one that all the crowds have come to watch. There's no doubt about it. In the past, we have had battles royal, including that man's super van, Michiel Campagna, the Toys. You're going to have any Krunovald thrown in the mix. Ben Morganut, Sorrel van der Merwe, and don't forget, you've got Peter Lindenberg coming back, along with Ben Morgan and Craig Davies, all the way from the UK, who will be fighting at the front end here with Sorrel van der Merwe, who leads things out as they go down into turn one for the start. Greg, where's the iPad in that car? <laughs> I was looking for the 8-track, but <laughs> <laughs> Down into turn two, though, Van is under pressure. That is Jeff Kruger on the outside in the Barracuda, looking for a way through early on. Coming from the back end of the field, you'll see a whole bunch of cars that don't normally race here, but have been given an opportunity to get in the mix, and you can see they're not holding back here. This is Henny G, oh. and wow, oh. G just avoiding the slamming of the door there from Detoy. I love that big bright red light that maybe it's just the rev limit and he's just not changing. No, it's just the turbo light that he's going to use a little bit later on in the race. And uh, you've been saying it the whole day, every class, this is the class that the spectators have come to see. But this is the class that the spectators have come to see. Hollywood Roberts in the back end of the field there as well. Mario's having a bit of a run in the Trans-Africa Racing Studebaker Golden Hawk. At the front though, Sorrel van der Merwe still side by side with Jeff Kruger. And look at this. In fact, every single car that was on the grid is still side by side with the car that it was with on the grid. And they're not the smallest cars in the world either so to do that is incredible driving from these guys exactly the car in fourth place at the moment is like a block of flats but <laughs> if you brake you got to make sure that you uh, pass Ponty before you hit the brakes <laughs> coming out of turn 8 now GNH transport corner and it's Kruger looking to get ahead of Supervan Jeff Kruger and the Barracuda looking for a chance can he find a way through there that Plymouth Barracuda is a very quick car and it looks like it's under big threat as uh, is there a change up for the lead yes there is Lindenberg hitting the front as they go down into turn 2 He's followed very closely by Van Amerva now, who has just lost out to Jeff Kruger. Round the outside comes Henny G. Henny Krunovov looking for a way through. There comes Craig Davies in that awesome Shelby Mustang. And heading on to the back. Oh, what is that? That is Kruger completely looping out that Barracuda. There goes the windscreen. He catches the car. He's on the grass. Can he get back on the dirty stuff? Oh, he's back on the black stuff. What a catch there from Kruger. If any man can catch a big car like that, Jeff Kruger is certainly one who can do it. But there's now going to be a little bit of debris all over that back straightaway. Look at that. Big pressure now coming from that uh, little Ford Mercury Comet of Henny G. This is what it looked like oh, from G's point shot. of view. Hallelujah. Here we go. Oh, he's out of shape. Oh, oh Kruger, completely out of shape. Well missed, Henny Grunewald. Up to second, though, and already applying pressure, even though he's just watched the car spin out dramatically. This is Clive Densham's point of view of that uh, car spinning out in the Alpha. He just tapped off ever so slightly, gave himself some room, but he's back on track. And Jeff Kruger now, with no windscreen, is going to back a little bit with uh, aerodynamics, even I'm, though he wasn't already. I'm pretty sure Jeff Kruger's going to have some arm pump after that. To catch that car was incredible. Remember, the grass is still very wet after the rain that we had this morning. So, uh, really good job there. But he's managed to keep it all together. Now starting to come through the field there. Some debris coming off one of the cars there. That's it's the brake board. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> it's the brake board that Jeff Kruger sent flying and uh, Michael Campagna managed to catch it. Ben Morgan who's now heading to the front end of this field. He seems to be getting away from the rest of them but he has to be worried about the fact that he might be lapping too quick for this class. There is a breakout time and Ben Morgan who could be in trouble. This is Michael Campagna who is out of shape in a big way in the big Lafayette Ford Galaxy. Let's catch up with him and find out how this weekend has gone. Yeah, we, we have some, uh, as it is in our country, winter time, so we need to repair some cars for our summer time, so we have some engines out and all, all these kind of things. So uh, I took uh, Ford Galaxy with me, uh, which I bought uh, here in South Africa a few years ago. Uh, then I did some uh, races in Europe, uh, and now we have it here again. It's a big car. As I said, it's like a block of flats when you hit the brakes on that thing. Unfortunately, he's crashing out there. He managed to get going again. Supervan is under threat, though. Here comes Jonathan Detroit and Densham. Densham in that big, giant killer alpha of his. He is uh, the meat in the sandwich between the two Detroit boys. Good recovery there from Jeff Kruger. Problems for Henny Krunovalt. Henny G on the sideline, pulling to the sideline. So that means Sorrel van der Merwe right now is closing down on Peter Lindenberg. This is the man in second place. Can he hang on? Is he going to be under threat from any of the other cars? There's a very oh. good possibility. And Jonathan Detroit loops it out. That you don't see every day. No, you don't. He's done so much driving to there as well just going into turn four got a little bit locked up and just couldn't correct the car in time and spinning out of a potential top three there and look out for Clive Densham in the little red car he's slowly but surely put his name into contention now for that top three uh, it looks like Sorrel van der Merwe holding off there as we watch Davies out front Peter Liebenberg is just behind him but that battle now for the final podium is certainly going to go down all the way to the wire here it is coming onto the straight oh Ben Morgan who'd run the outside of Sorrel van der Merwe going to the line Morgan who's going to pip him to the line yes he does Morgan who crosses the line but unfortunately Ben Morganut and Craig Davies caught out by the one minute 14 rule there for this class and were uh, deemed to have broken out. Lindenberg taking the win from Sorrel 
Vandermeer and Mark Dutoy. Let's catch up with Supervan. Well, we were on pole position, but uh, there were four other cars quicker and they were f- f- dragged down the field because of their qualifying time. And uh, th- that car was really, was really never in the race. It's one of the oldest ones around and it's just not quick enough. The modern cars have got to come a lot quicker. So at the end of the day, uh, third or fourth was probably a good thing for me. Fourth is a good thing for Saul Vermeer. No. I've never heard him say that in my life before. He's still recovering from the VW Challenge knock that he got earlier in the day because <laughs> that is su- certainly not Supervan talking there. Hang tight for uh, race two. There's a possibility you're going to see a little bit more of uh, retribution coming from Saul Vermeer, particularly on Ben Morganud, I think, who will also be looking for a little retribution and try and remain within the lap times. Double yellows down into turn one and two as the race starts. And it looks like Lindenberg is going to lead them through as they go down into turn two. Van der Merwe there into second. Denjam into third, actually outgunning the 57 Chev. As you can see, that little Alpha has got a great turn of pace. What they've done on Jeff Kruger's car is they've taken the rear windscreen out as well so that the air can flow through. He was battling a little bit with drag after that windscreen got blown out. And of course, where do you find a windscreen for a, 50, a 65 Plymouth Barracuda? I'm not quite sure if there's one around. Not in Pretoria, I don't <laughs> think. Uh... Oh! There you go, 43 getting it completely out of shape. Ollie Broom and Michael Sullivan. Ah, the Ford Mustang, unfortunately, just going to the inside of the circuit. And if you get onto the grass today, because of all the rain we had last night and this morning, unfortunately, it's going to cost you. It really is, especially with the amount of horsepower that's available in these cars. There is Mark Dutoy, just uh, taking a slow start to the race. Done a lot of driving today, so he knows exactly how to get through here at Swatkops Raceway. Another man who's done a lot of driving is Craig Davies, who's right on his tail. Looks like he's lining up a move now on the inside. The man all the way from the UK, yep, he's ticked that box off, so up the inside. So let's go down now into pit lane and catch up with Craig Davies. Yeah, it's a 1966 uh, Shelby Mustang. I've owned it for about six years now. Um, it's a lovely car, it was built. It's been racing most of its life. Uh, company in America, Cobra Automotive, they owned the car. It was Kurt Voigt's personal car. So it's got a good racing history, good racing pedigree. I was very lucky enough to buy that car from him. And uh, it's, just a, it's just something I've always wanted. I've always loved Shelby's. And uh, it's a pleasure to drive. Uh, car sounds very nice. And uh, I love driving it here. It's the first time here as well. And uh, what a track. Great people, fun people. I've just, it's hilarious, the, the atmosphere that's going on here. It's so different to the UK. So I think we could learn a, a, a trick or two from these guys. So uh, it's great. It certainly is good to see that car in full flight. Up to fourth place now, catching on Ben Morganut. Morganut applying pressure onto Densham. The first of the big gunners is Jeff Kruger with the the lesser spotted Plymouth Barracuda with no (laughs) windscreens on. Front or back. Final Merva there under pressure from the big Black Widow of Mark Detoy. And then it's Michiel Campagna who's made his way back on the track and got that car sorted for heat too. Peter Lindenberg in that 1965 Ford Mustang still out front. Ooh, getting a little bit out of shape there, but I think they do that just at every single turn, the amount of horsepower that comes into those back tyres. Car number 95 also in a great battle there, just outside the top 10. That is Armand Adrian's from all the way from Netherlands. So great to see. That's also a 65 Ford Mustang. So seems to be the car of choice for this category as it's getting a little bit too tight there now. We've heard Sora from Amava. He was kind of happy with that fourth place. I don't think he's going to be happy now in race number two. He's fighting with a car that uh, he's raced in before as well. That Lafayette Ford of Michiel Campagnas. He's been in the Detroit version of that. That's the red Galaxy. He's been in the gray one. That's from Pablo Clark Racing. And he's now in the Chevelle. The smoky unique Chevelle there. Sorrel van der Merwe piling it as well. But unfortunately getting outgunned there by the Nova of Jonathan Detroit. At the front, change up for the lead. Lindenberg down to third place. Morgan Root now leads out. Davies into second. Then it's Densham. Oh, that little welfare of his is so quick and it's been a giant killer in the past as well and right now sits in fourth place in amongst these big V8 Mustangs at the front end look at that Dave he's getting out of shape here we go around the outside the toy cuts back he's going to look for the inside line coming out of turn two and try and get the squeeze there but oh man the block of flats just put the power down but further back the under two leaders were in this class as well combined this time and you can see a big battle at the front end as Trevor Tuck unfortunately making a little bit of mistakes not characteristically from him He's dropped down into fifth place. It's actually Vic Kampfer in the Tom Kampfer Volvo that leads things out in under two litres. Oh, what a shot. Seeing Craig Davies laid the power down and just see those black straps coming up out of turn number four as they get to turn number five now. A little, 
looks like he's able to pick his lines there. So very good setup in that car as we come now down to the final stages of the race. Liebenberg suffering with a little bit of problems in that car because not able to select his line there. So really doing well to hang on there. But it is Morgan Root out front just ahead of Craig Davies for now. And just behind them, that battle still raging on there for the top three. So great drive here from Ben Morgan Root. Car number nine comes across the line. How oh, spectacular is Sideways. That? <laughs> awesome to see. Right at the front end of the under two litre class. It was Vic Kampfer who came across the line to take the win. A little bit further down there, you can see Alan Poulter still fighting with Pinar and Leotard to take up the top six there in the under two litre class. Jeff Kruger winning that overall after the cars one, two, three, and four were deemed to be breakouts of their class. In the under two litre class, once again at the front end, great to see Vic Kampfer not only supporting the series, but also supporting this category in a big way. Gearing in second and Alan Poulter in third. Let's catch up with Ben Morganut after a fantastic day's racing. We started in, in, in 15 spot, and, um, and my good friend Sardel was about halfway up the grid, and uh, I was determined to catch him after what he did to me in the Polo Cup. So uh, that was a good race. I gave it everything it had. Uh, I think I've taken a couple of years off the life of the motor car, but it, again, that's worth it as well. Wonderful day's racing, and I just want to thank Peter Dutui, his staff, his sons, for this wonderful event that they give us every year. We certainly hope you've enjoyed all the racing action from the 17th running of the Passion for Speed Festival. We know the crowds did. The 18th running will be on the last weekend of January in 2019. Make sure it's in your diaries. But let's catch up with the man who put it all together, Peter Detoy. I think they're all lovely days, they're incredible days. There's a huge spread of motor cars, spirit of the public, the spirit of the competitors. Uh, they're all there with you. And I mean, it's just a, a great day of enjoyment. But it's both on and off the track. And on the track, I knew some incredible racing. You know, with the big V8s, with the Lamar cars, the international sports prototypes, single seaters, Lotus, the little, even the little giants, the smaller little cars. That, so, you know, it just, it just lifts up to the occasion. But it won't happen if we have the, without the public support and the spirit of competitors and public.